Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, Herod inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They knew all they needed to know, but they didn't do anything. When Magi from the East came to Jerusalem asking for a newborn Jewish king whose birth they had seen in the stars. The chief priests and scribes knew exactly what they were talking about. They knew where this child could be found. When they heard the Magi's search parameters, child, Jewish king, important enough for some sort of astrological notice, they knew chapter and verse, Micah 5.2, and quoted it to Herod. From Bethlehem, one of the least among Judah will come a ruler to shepherd God's people. Maybe they had to do some research first. Matthew doesn't say. But they got the, they got the answer right. They believed the scripture told of the birth of this child, and they knew where it would happen. They just didn't know when. But now they knew that too. Because these foreign astrologers have arrived saying, this event has happened. So, why didn't the chief priests and scribes join the Magi and head to Bethlehem? All the puzzle pieces were in place. Why didn't the scholars of the people Jesus was born into, the teachers of God's chosen people, join these non-Jewish stargazers and go see what God was doing. Isaiah describes this coming as light 
in the darkness, much as the star that the Magi followed. And these Jerusalem scribes would have known the verses we heard today as well. Isaiah says that this coming of God will attract kings and nations who will bring gifts of frankincense and gold. So these foreign visitors bringing those gifts to worship this child was a sign itself that God's light, this child, had arrived. And surely the scribes would have believed there was a need for light, would have understood the land and the world to be in some darkness. Under Rome's thumb, the Jewish people weren't free. They weren't thriving. The promise of hope spoken to God's people in exile, as declared in Isaiah 60, would have been just as needed at that time as well. They knew all this. And still they did nothing. Maybe the darkness of life and the darkness of the world was so much that they couldn't even think of how they could begin to look for God's light. It was too much. Why get your hopes up? We can understand that. We talk about the state of the world, the chaos, the wickedness, the oppression of huge numbers of God's children, the destruction of our climate. And even if previous generations have seen the same things, that doesn't mean words of hope and promise aren't restorative to us, that we don't also long for such grace from God. Maybe we also just don't see much hope that it will happen in any significant way. And it's not just the darkness of the world or our society. Each of us faces challenges and struggles where we feel as if we're walking in the dark, as if we can't see. Diseases, job problems, broken relationships, setbacks we face that can overwhelm. We wonder about our purpose here. Is there any point to all of this? We fear death, ours and others. So if God is shining light into the darkness that we know in this world and that we fear, it'd be wonderful to know that if we would let ourselves hope. Well, today Isaiah says you can hope. Arise, he says, to a people in pain and fear. Darkness covers the earth, he says, covers the people. But God is rising up, and God's light is shining on you. This is the heart of our Christmas celebration, that God has come to join us in our darkness, in our fear, in our exile, and bring light in Jesus. The light of hope that we are in God's love always and cannot be removed. The light of promise that all the things we've done to contribute to the darkness of our own lives and the darkness of this world are forgiven. The light of wisdom that there is a path of light to walk in the darkness that will be abundant and full for us and for the whole creation. Now, as we know, this is going to be a long dawning. The light spreads from one person to another, and there will be times it seems as if the sun is not coming up. We need the Spirit's gift of patience. But today, more than that, we need Isaiah's trumpet call. Get up. Go see what God is doing. Join with others who are looking and together find the light. You don't have to sit in Jerusalem knowing that God's light has come and close your doors and pull down your shades. You don't have to be so tied up in your guilt or fear or anxiety that you can't even begin to look for where God might be bringing light. You don't have to be so overwhelmed by the complexities of the problems of the world that you don't even think there will be enlightenment from God. Arise, Isaiah says. See what God is doing. And Isaiah also says shine. You now 
are part of that light you've arisen to go and see. Now that you see where God's light is shining now, you become reflectors of God's light shining on others. This was one of God's greatest hopes for Israel, that they would take their chosenness, their knowledge and belief in the love of the one true God that they had and invite all nations into it. The Magi shone, they arose, they got up and followed, and then they shone. They witnessed to the world that God had raised up a ruler who would be faithful to God. They shone hope and faith to all Jerusalem as they followed the star. So you too shine as you are looking for this light and as you follow it and as you band together with all these others who are searching for this light. Let your light so shine before others, Jesus said, so that they will see the good you do and glorify God for it. You become the star. Today, Paul tells the Ephesians that's his main calling. That's why he's in jail and why he preaches when he's not in jail because he has seen God's light in Christ Jesus and has to shine it for others to see. I have become a minister of this good news, Paul says, through God's grace that works in me to make everyone see what is the plan in the mystery that has been hidden for the ages in God who created all things. So, what if you saw that as your calling too? You, as someone who has seen the light of God's good news shining in this place, in the grace you've eaten and drunk at Christ's table, in the forgiveness and love you've met and believed here, in the healing of all things by God that you have seen here. You, as someone who has seen the light of God's good news shining in the world, in the eyes and love and compassion of countless people shining in the world's darkness, in the touch and in the embrace of countless others who have been with you in your dark places. What if you, having arisen and seen such things, also heard your call to shine, to let others see what is in this plan that has been hidden in God's mystery, but now is revealed to the world? I like to think that some of the scribes snuck out the side door of Herod's palace and caught up with the Magi, wanting to see God's light for themselves. I hope some did. But you needn't hide or sneak around. You've seen God's light shining, even if it's still great mystery how it will shine on all and how the healing of all things will happen through God's coming. You have seen God's light because you have come here you have arisen and joined with others who are following this star, seeking this light. And now, as Paul promised, God's grace will give you the ability to shine in this world, in your life, amongst others, to be a star others can follow, to be a light of hope, to be a minister of this good news, until everyone comes to Bethlehem to see and to be filled with joy in God's healing light. In the name of Jesus, amen.